down the side of an erupting volcano. And what a perfect time to ride a black unicorn down the side of an erupting volcano because today's my birthday. Today I turned 54 years old. <laughs> 54. Or as my Yumi puts it, I'm, what'd you say I was? Four years old in level five? Um, yeah, four years old in level I'm five. Four years old on level five. Thank you, everybody, for your birthday wishes. Uh, you know, it's a birthday celebration. And uh, unfortunately, though, I can't really play music. Because if I play music, then I'll probably get a copyright strike. That includes some of my own. I recently got a copyright strike because, and they actually demonetized the half hour Dragon Con video that I posted because I sang When You're Evil. So it wasn't even, I wasn't even using the recording of When You're Evil. I was just singing When You're Evil acoustically. And it said that some organization by the name of Latin Autor decided that they own that song. Uh-oh, what's going on over there? <laughs> they decided they own that song. And even just me singing it acoustically was somehow a copyright violation. It's my own damn song. Ah, YouTube. Ah, YouTube. But in any case, we're not going to talk about, we're not going to gripe about YouTube today. We're here to celebrate. And this is a video newsletter. In fact, it is the very first video newsletter of 2021. This is the January video newsletter. And before we get into any toasts or any singing or any question answering, we're just going to treat this like any other video newsletter to start out with. And I'm going to tell you, where am I playing near you? Uh, well, it is almost February. And my very first show of 2021 is in February. Excuse me. It's February 26th in Houston, Texas. Anybody out there from Houston? Anybody coming to the Houston show? The Bronx, that's a little far off from Houston, but you never know, there could be a New York show. Um, so, Houston show, February 26th at Scout Bar. Presuming nothing changes, of course, we're gonna follow all regulations, we're gonna keep everybody safe, there'll be social distancing, there'll be mask wearing and all that fun stuff. Thank you, Harmony. Uh, you know what I forgot to do? Give me one second. There's something that I forgot to do because I am old and blind as a bat. I should really be, um, I should really put my chat on the computer next to me so that I can see your comments. Because if I have to read them off the phone, we're not going to get very far at all. So let's see now, where are we? Um, I wish I knew what I was doing. Oh yeah, we're going to go to content, we're going to go to live, and there we are. That is the live stream. This is so weird. I'm sitting here like going through the analytics of the live stream. There's a lag. Going through the analytics of the live stream. There's a lag. Okay, so let's turn that off. Let's make these comments nice and big. Oh, Asher, you made it after all. I thought you weren't going to make it. You stayed up late. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, now I've got the comments in front of me. They're nice and big and I can see them. And uh, so to continue, I have a show February 26th um, in Houston, Texas at Scout Bar. I hope some of you will come. And uh, and the next show after that, wait, now my, now my comments froze. Oh wait, hold on. Sturban, thank you very much. Hi there, this is an awesome birthday song called Happy Birthday, My Old Friend. I know it. You should listen to it if you haven't. Some cool looking guy sings it. You are very, very kind. Thank you, Sturban. Thank you very much. And I just want to scroll back really for a second. I just want to scroll back to say thank you very much to Harmony. Thank you, Harmony. And I'd also like to thank Roman. Thank you, Roman. Thank you so much. I'm getting birthday presents. This is amazing. <laughs> I've never done a birthday stream before. Um... But, you know, my, my comments keep freezing. That part is sort of unfortunate. Can I make that stop happening? Thank you, Crimson Cat. My dear Captain, just dropped by quickly to wish you a happy birthday. Big hug. Hope you had an awesome day. Thank you so much. I did have a very awesome day. Thanks to Mayumi. And thank you, John. 
Thank you, John. I turned 51 myself 11 days ago. What? Sunny boy. Only 51, sunny boy. <laughs> it's very nice to see you around, John. In any case, so here we are, and there's only that one show in February. Now, my next show after that was supposed to be Dark Side of the Con, but Dark Side of the Con has been postponed until the first week of April. And for all intents and purposes, that's when the UK tour is. I'm supposed to be on tour in the UK. Thank you, Moira. Thank you. Uh, so, but, so, is it going to happen? I don't know. I hope so. You know, the UK has been in lockdown, and Lord knows there's a new strain, and Lord knows what's happening in the UK. So we're just watching that situation very carefully. Needless to say, if I don't make it to the UK, then I guess I'll be playing at Dark Side of the Con after all, in their rescheduled date, which is, I think, the first weekend of April. And, uh, or otherwise we'll be in the UK. You know, these are the times that we live in. We just don't know from one day to the next what we can rely on. But, you know, we're running fast and loose and shooting from the hip and staying safe while, you know, just rolling with the punches. It's all you can do. Thank you, Loki. Have a drink on me and happy birthday. Thank you very much. Been a fan for 15 years. Thank you for sticking around. Loki, I am going to have a drink on you. I'm going to put that $5 towards this bottle of wine that I just bought at La Naval. Is it La Naval or El Naval? La Naval. La Naval. <laughs> I spend so much money at La Naval. So I'm in Mexico City, in case you haven't noticed. This incredible piece of work behind me is an enormous painting on several pieces of wood that is by a very, very good friend of Mayumi's. Named Foy, yes? Foy Jimenez. Foy Jimenez. Great artist. She's incredibly talented. Foy is a lady, yeah? Yeah. She's incredibly talented. There's several paintings of hers here at the, uh, you know, Lair of Voltaire South. Lair of Voltaire South of the border. <laughs> it's really Lair of Mayumi. Mayumi, we need to come up with a name for your place. The Lair. All right, well, Lair's taken. How about like Chateau Mayumi? Okay. Casa Mayumi. I don't know. We're going to work on it. <laughs> uh, Sprocket, 66. Happy birthday, my old friend. You inspired me all the way through my... Oh, what word you coming from? Teenage years, and you continue to amaze me every day. Thank you so much. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you, Asher. Asher just sent me some pounds. And, you know, pounds... Pounds are so much more valuable than dollars. <laughs> I think. Is that still the case? I think it is. Uh, Ray Steiner, happy birthday. I miss annoying you at Dragon Con. Keep kicking beep. I can say ass. Keep kicking ass. Also, my kid is now as old as you when I was starting to listen to your music. Oh my God, wow. Wait, that's not possible. Really? Are you serious? Wait, your child is 54? Let me read that again. My kid is now as old as, oh, as I was when I started listening to your music. Okay, that makes more sense. You sang... You sang Goodnight Demon Slayer to them as a baby. Wow. It's going back. Capricorn Dragon. Hey, Barb. Happy birthday, my old friend. Hugs from La, La Florida. Yes. The Florida. I need to return to Florida soon, too. I really do love the Florida. Man, I miss playing in Orlando and in Tampa and in uh, Pensacola and, of course, in Jacksonville. Uh, Blake, thank you very much. We miss you at Temple in Knoxville. Blake... I had a show in Temple this summer, and it was postponed twice. And then we finally just decided we had to we had to just postpone it indefinitely. So hopefully we can reschedule that for the spring. Hopefully we don't only have hopefully we don't have to wait till summer of 2021. But thank you, Blake. So that's it for shows. You know, there's the February show. Are they doing construction now? It's really weird. It is weird. What time is it? It's nine, nine ten. <laughs> Renee, thank you for showing up, Renee. Florida loves you, too. Oh, thank you, Renee. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good to see you here. Um, yeah, they're doing construction at 9 p.m. That's kind of weird. That's so New York. I feel like I'm at the Lair of <laughs> Voltaire. It's because it's your birthday. It's because it's my birthday? I really don't think that's why they're doing construction. Are they building me something over there? Keno McFarland, happy birthday. I don't think I've gone this long without seeing you since 2005. Yeah. It's been weird. But thank you, Kino. Thank you, Kino. Thank you, Ernie. Happy birthday for Megan and I. Pretend this is a socially distanced rum and coke or cigar. And hi to my human. Oh, hello, Megan and Ernie. And Megan. Hello. Oh, there's a hidden comment. Why is it hidden? Oh, because it's in Russian and we don't know what it means. 
ready to go. Now it's gone. It's, it's too bad there isn't like an instant translator in this thing. Uh, Garrett, my 26th just passed on the 19th. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, old friend. Huge fan of your music. Uh, extremely unique. Keep on rocking it. I am trying. Maggie, thanks for showing up and thank you very much. Here's to much better year. Any news on a light in the shadows? That's a very good question. You know, it seems like I've skipped right past the newsletter because I'm really not talking about what I, I should be, right? I should be. So I'm going to in a minute and I'm going to answer your question. But first I want to say, Wolf Girl, thank you very much. Happy birthday, Voltaire. My birthday was five days ago. Happy birthday, Wolf Girl. Hope you're having a great time in Mexico City and that you and my Yumi are doing well. So first of all, A Light in the Shadows, I really have to cover that before I forget, and I don't want to leave Maggie hanging. So A Light in the Shadows, I don't know what's happening with it. I've kind of stopped editing it because I've gotten really, really busy with what I'm working on right this moment. So it's not going to go away, for, you know, it's not going to go away altogether, but it's on hold. Uh, 420 Peace Frogs, happy birthday. It killed me not to see you at the church when you came back a little back, yeah, a little while ago. Yeah, that's too bad. Hopefully it'll happen again. It'll happen again. Um, but yeah, and it was a very socially distanced, everybody wore masks, it was cool, it was very safe, it was a great show. We should definitely do it again. Epsilon Gal Galaxis, happy birthday to the Lord of Darkness on this moonlit night. It probably is a moonlit night, is it? I can't tell from here. Um, Stephanie Hall, happy birthday. I'm the big 49 tomorrow. Stephanie, you got one more year before you're officially old. I'm kidding, of course. 50 is four years ago for me now. It feels like so long ago. <laughs> I feel great. I do, you know. Um, I complain about, you know, body aches and old people stuff, you know, like I can't see without my glasses and stuff like that. But I have to say, you know, we played badminton this weekend in Chapultepec Park. And... Uh, it was a lot of exercise and I didn't, I, you know, I felt a little rusty, but I didn't feel like an old man. I just felt like somebody who needs to exercise more. So I guess that's the message. So I am not going to look at the comments for the next five or 10 minutes. Okay. So if you post something for me, just, just know, just hold your comments perhaps for the next five or 10 minutes so that I can get information out to you. Number one, Big shout out to Mayumi for exhausting me this weekend. She, <laughs> she made this weekend completely exhausting. I don't celebrate my birthday, but there was so much birthday stuff going on. The, uh, Friday night, she, th she threw me a surprise party. Well, it wasn't Friday night. It was Friday during the day she threw me a surprise party. I was loafing around the house, like in my underwear, literally in my underwear and, and sandals. I know. Sandals, really? They're not sandals. What are they? Slippers. House, slippers. house slippers. And um, she's like, come upstairs to the roof. Come upstairs to the roof. The neighbors are having a barbecue. I was like, I'll be up there later. And I just kept putting it off and putting it off. And and then I finally went up there and she had organized a party. So she put up all these spooky decorations, skeleton, cut out skeletons and cut out bats. She hand cut herself and a big Feliz cumpleaños sign and she made hand uh, homemade borscht and she made homemade ceviche and they bought this giant fish and the, the, the neighbors barbecued it and there was rum and there was cigars and um what time did i go up there was it 2 p.m yeah, 1 p.m 2 p.m 2 2 i came back downstairs at 1 a.m so <laughs> that that party raged for over for 12 hours for about 12 hours <laughs> It was exhausting. It was lovely. It was really, really sweet. But I was just like, next time, can my party be like a couple hours? <laughs> 12 hours long. Really lovely. We danced. There were disco lights. And we danced on the roof. And the weather was beautiful. And so um, it was really lovely. So I thought that was it. And then the next day we woke up and she was like, okay, we're going to go meet my siblings in the park for a picnic. It was the whole family. And there was badminton playing, and there was uh, picnicking, and it was really lovely. We had a really lovely time, and it was a whole day in the park. So that was, that was you know, birthday celebration number two. So thank you. Big, big applause oh. for my Yumi. 
for, uh, for for not planning a birthday party, but rather planning a whole birthday weekend. I'm going to need a vacation from my birthday. That's, <laughs> So that's, I, I did want to say that. Now, getting back to uh, the work at hand, you already know where the shows are uh, and are not. So let's just say February 26th in Houston, Texas. And then after that, we don't know. Hopefully the um, UK tour will happen. If it doesn't, I guess I'll be playing at Dark Side of the Con. Uh, I mean, it'd be great if I could do both somehow. So we'll see what happens. And then there's no shows booked after that, to the best of my recollection. And then that brings us to the Spanish album. The Spanish album is now officially on hold indefinitely because I hit a wall on another project, getting back to Maggie Fry's question, that um, has become very, very, very intense. And we're going to get to that. So the Spanish album is now on hold. It's totally going to happen. It's just not going to happen as quickly as I thought it was going to happen. And what is that project that's driving me completely insane? It's Black Labyrinth. Sit down, grab a drink, grab something to hold on to, because Black Labyrinth is full steam ahead. You may already know that all the drums have been recorded by Sterling Campbell, who was a longtime David Bowie drummer, as well as a member of Duran Duran for a while. He played with Cyndi Lauper. He's presently the drummer for B-52s. And he was kind enough to come and play drums on uh, seven, 13 songs so far. And then it was time to do bass. And I reached out to Mark Platy, who produced the David Bowie album Earthling in 1999, as well as, and then ended up playing guitar and bass on several world tours with David Bowie and on countless recordings and co producing with him. So Mark played bass on something like 10 songs and I can now officially announce that another bass player who has joined us is none other than Gail Ann Dorsey who if you google David Bowie bass player you will find Gail Ann Dorsey comes up every single time as the first uh, result because she played with him on numerous recordings and numerous concerts he clearly admired her talents greatly. So what an honor and what a joy to be playing with somebody so talented and somebody who David Bowie admired so much. So Gail is recording bass for three songs. Well, I should say has already. She's recorded bass for two songs already. She's recorded uh, the bass for um, Safe in Your Love. And she's recorded the bass for um, As High as the Wind Blows. And she'll be doing Someone Like You. And in the scope of things on Black Labyrinth, those are the songs that are sung by Zenobia Vosk. It's no coincidence. I really wanted for those songs to have a very, very particular flavor. And I was really, I really had my heart on Gail playing bass on those. And now she has. So that's so exciting. But that's not the end of the great news because today I can also officially confirm that, the, that playing guitar in this album is none other than my old friend Mr. Ray Toro of My Chemical Romance. And just today, Ray sent in a track for a song called Keep On Moving. Thank you, Wolf Girl. Bowie, Bowie is looking down on you and helping with Black Labyrinth. He must be. I was saying in my Patreon, uh, I wrote to my patrons today on Patreon, and I said, uh, you know, that their patronship is... is the best birthday gift that I can get really, you know, month by month support that allows me to keep the lights on, allows me to put food on the table while I continue to make art. But I gotta say, it's like the universe must have realized it was my birthday for Gail Ann Dorsey and Ray Toro to join me this week on this incredible journey. And thank you very much, Mary. Maria, Maria, my Mary, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Miss the good old days of Scream Fest in Orlando. Me too. Let's hope we return to that soon. So in any case, um, that's the big news on Black Labyrinth, Ray Toro's guitar part. You know what? I'm going to play you a little bit of it. I want to tell you about this song. This song, when I sent this to Ray, I said, Ray, I want this song to sound like it's played by a combination of Iron Maiden and the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. And he sent me this. <laughs> Wait for it. 
This is all gonna be horn. Do, 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 do. Oh wait, no, that's the final countdown. It's similar though. <laughs> well, I was headbanging, my hair got all messed up. Uh, I am so thrilled. I am so thrilled uh, to be able to share a little snippet of that with you. Um, and it's such a joy to have Ray working on this album. Many of you may know that he played on Raised by Bats. He played two, two songs on Raised, no, three songs. He played Raised by Bats, Oh My Goth, and he played on The Devil and Mr. Jones. Uh, so it's such a joy to have him back. Man, he is so great and he's so talented. And it's, it's really, really just so lovely to be working with him again. And so, you know, we'll see what happens after this. Maybe he'll do some more songs. And I've got some other guitars, some Bowie alumni in mind for some of the other songs as well. I think I might also play you while we're here a little uh, something of Gail's work. Let's see, what have we got here? Um, as, as High as the Wind Blows. I'm going to play that again because I'm pretty sure you thought that hum was bass, but that was Mayumi going, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn this one up because this is a quiet, this is a ballad. That's Sterling Campbell on drums. Suddenly, 
And that's all I'm going to tell you that. Uh, but, uh, you know, actually, if you think about those two songs back to back, you've got to keep on moving. I, I know that darkness deep inside that makes you crawl and want to die. And that's why I know you've got to keep on moving. You just have to stand up and, and, and decide you're going to make it through that night. And this song, I will fly as high as the wind blows as soon as I learn to let go, to not be afraid, to get out of your daily norm, to take risks, to even your dream. So this album, which started out as being really like really dark requiem, has provided uh, quite a lot of opportunities to write some really, really hopeful songs, you know, very, very inspiring songs. So I really, really hope that uh, if you follow me on this journey of Black Labyrinth, you know, it's going to, it starts out dark and there's every reason for it to start out dark because it starts out with the death of the Goblin King. I'm sure by now you probably all know this is sort of an official sequel to, an unofficial sequel to Labyrinth. And, uh, but it starts out with the death of the Goblin King because just like in real life, you know, David Bowie has left us. And it started out as a tribute and an homage and a requiem. And it was going to be a lot darker than it is. And it's just turned out, it, it, it has given me reason to dig out of darkness, to dig out of depression, to dig out of um, feelings of desperation and hopelessness, and to realize how you go about reaching for the light and, you know, just kind of like picking yourself up. And in the case of keep on moving, sometimes it just means just get up, just get out of bed. Just get out of bed, stand up. Like it says in the song, stand up, never give it what it wants to tear you down, to crush your will, to break your heart. If you just stand up and just remain standing, you will probably make it through the day. But you have to start somewhere. In any case, that is what I've been working on, of course, and also the book, Black Labyrinth, I've been writing nonstop. Um, and uh, it's so much more work than I thought it was going to be. I really thought this book was going to be a lot like Legend of Candy Claws, like one page of text on a drawing, one page of text on a drawing. It is a novel. I just have to accept it. It's a novel. I'm writing it in not. No, it's probably a novella. I'm writing it in novel form, and each chapter now is pages. It's not one page. It's pages. So thank you, catastrophe. Thank you. And. Uh, so I hope you will look forward to that. And now we're going to get back to some comments and questions here. Let me get back to my screen. Uh, Nick, Her, Nick Herf Meme Central. Oops. Hold on. Happy birthday. Been a fan since childhood, and I hope I finally get to see you play in person when this mess is over. Me too. Thank you very much. In any case, it is, and thank you, Asher, uh, for coming along on the journey with us. Um, it is a journey. It is not a record. It's a journey. It's a double album, to say the very, very least. Oh, that's right. There was one last thing I wanted to tell you about Black Labyrinth. Um, Rivian, Rivian Black. Uh, happy birthday. Thank you for inspiring my art in refinishing furniture and giving them macabre makeovers. I hope one day for you to see my work. I've seen lots of your work. I follow your work. Um, yeah, I, I see your posts, and I think what you do is really magnificent. I think you make really, really amazing projects. You should do a gothic homemaking show of your own, in fact. Harmony, uh, have you ever considered having a Discord server? You know, I, I'm, I, if I've learned anything in 2020, it's that um, less social media means me being more productive. So people are like, you should get on Discord, you should get on Twitch, you should get on TikTok, you should get on Snapchat. It's like, I'm trying to do less, not more. So welcome to my YouTube channel. It may be the last man standing eventually. Uh, Valeria, hope to listen to you in Mexico City. I now live three hours away and no 12 and no 12. I'm sure my Yumi is making great time for you at my Yumi's Mansion of Mysteries. <laughs> Feliz cumpleaños, Walter. Muchas gracias, Maria. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. So uh, there was one last thing I wanted to tell you about Black Labyrinth. Uh, so I'm working on the book. We're working on the illustrations. 
there's 13 songs that have been tracked so far that are in various stages of undress and we are working on those thank you jennifer happy birthday thank you very much jennifer uh but there's seven more songs to write seven can you believe it happy birthday says sunny can you say hi to my parrots they're very worried inside the phone <laughs> spooky hello spooky hello normandy spooky spooky normandy normandy i really hope there's birds somewhere going <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Sonny. Seven more songs. It's unbelievable. How long is this damn record? Well, I know how long it is. It's 20, 20 songs long. So I'm presently working on my epitaph, in light of recent events, the king is dead, a song for the goblin king, something else I can't, oh, well, Magic Dance is the last song in the album. That's a, just a straight up cover. And When I Said I Was Evil, which is a sequel to When You're Evil. That song is epic and contains a whole bunch of Disney quotes. I want you to go tell Pablo to shut the <laughs> hell up. They're watching. Dile a Pablo. You can tell him. Dile, he's dile, oye, Pablo. Pablo, ¿qué te pasa? Wey, no mames. Estoy tratando de hacer un video en vivo, Pablo. ¿Qué están haciendo ya? Construyendo qué? Una palapa? ¿Qué pasa? Se pueden los sillones en IKEA, no se tienen que fabricar todo de mano. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of construction going on over there. It's starting to get late. Te voy a llamar el casero. Dice Fernando, están poniendo un librero. Oh, yeah? Uh -huh. Un librero. Uh -huh. Well, hopefully they'll finish their library soon so that they can read because at least that's quiet. Ah, es de Fernando. Ja, 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 lo siento. ¿Cómo? Oh, es de Fernando. Es de Fer. ¿Qué carajo está haciendo Fer? Le están poniendo un librero. Él está poniendo librero. As if he reads. <laughs> He's very literate. He's actually a very literate guy. Happy birthday. Hope you have yourself an awesome day, says Sneaky Bean. Thank you, Sneaky Bean. That is now officially everything I want to tell you about Black Labyrinth. Is that true? Well, I also really wanted to come out at Dragon Con. So I really, really wanted to come out in August. Um, but that, I mean... That might be possible for the album. I just don't see how that would be possible for the book. I got my fingers crossed and I'm doing my very best and I really, really hope that Black Labyrinth will be finished. So um, yeah, Spanish album is just going to have to wait. Gothic homemaking, uh, I, I'm in Mexico, as you know, with my Yumi. I fly back to New York on the 1st of November, oh, November, I wish, <laughs> February. I have to go pay my rent and get back to work on Gothic homemaking videos. So presumably Gothic uh, Gothic homemaking will be back on the air in March or if I want to be a real creep like I was last year, maybe I'll do it in April, on April 1st again, just so that I can amass a really nice body of high quality videos. So it's bam, 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 one great video after the next starting in April. So we'll see, maybe March, maybe April. But let's just face it, if Black is going to be as big and as bad as it's looking like it could be. And if it's going to come out in August, I need to focus as much of my attention as possible on that. So that's what I'm doing. So of course, this is the part where I'm going to give you my pitch. There is a tier on my Patreon called Keys to the Goblin City. I'm going to tell you what it involves. It's expensive. It's not cheap. It's $33. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot to swallow. $33. But what you get is everything. Literally Everything. Gracias, Carlos. Muchas gracias por la contribución. 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 Muchas gracias por la contribución. Uh, $33, you literally get everything. So if you're not already uh, uh, on that tier of Keys to the Goblin City, let me tell you what, what the people who are have received. Every single song in its entirety at every single stage. So there are 13 songs. Everybody on that tier has received all 13 songs as solo acoustic versions. So that's me and acoustic guitar. And then when Sterling Campbell came in and recorded drums, they all, they all got all of those same songs again with drums. And then when Mark Platy came in and recorded bass, they got the songs that Mark played on on bass. This week, this week or next week, well, this week for sure, you're going to get Ray Toro's sketch 
for Keep On Moving. And then next week, you'll get the track with Ray Toro playing his final guitar part, as well as the bass that, that Mark played. And next week, you'll also get the three songs that um, Gail Ann Dorsey plays on. So literally, ever, as I add an instrument, you get that song in its entirety. So it really is like following me on with, I mean, you're there with me the entire step of the way. If you can afford to do it, I'd appreciate it. The album is so expensive to make. <laughs> if you can't, don't worry. The album's going to come out one day eventually. Now, now, now I'm obsessing about my hair. Um, Rachel, thank you very much, Rachel. And Mayra, good to see you here. Happy birthday, Captain. A few years ago, you sang happy birthday to my daughter on her 10th birthday, and this year she turns 19 and is dying to meet you. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. And say hello to your daughter for me. I want to say, like, you you come to the shows in St. Louis. Am I wrong? Are, are those the ones you make it out to? So I think, I think I'm not wrong. I think it's St. Louis where I see you. And if that's the case, then hopefully we can plan a St. Louis show. And now we're going to take a little break. Okay, so everybody's going to take a break. Ready? That looks terrible. That looks worse. All right, but that's how it's going to look. It's my birthday, and if my hair's going to, if, you know, it's going to be messed up, it's going to be messed up. I think you're going to let me slide today. I hope. And now let's get back to birthday business. I am drinking a glass of wine. I would like to share a toast with you. If you have a libation, I want you to get it ready. If you uh, do not drink alcohol, I'm sure you must have something else you enjoy drinking. Coca-Cola or orange juice or guava nectar or um, sarsaparilla or coconut water. Mayumi likes coconut water. I is, that love what it. is that what it's called? Coconut water? Yeah. I just want to say thank you. On my birthday, I feel so very, very appreciative to have your company, to have your support, the fact that you're interested in what I do. I am 1000% fully aware of the fact that as an artist, I can be sitting here pouring out my soul into songs and into books and into whatever else, films and whatever. And there could be no one in the world who's interested in seeing it but me. I, I never, ever, ever lose sight of that. And because tastes change and music, you know, especially taste in music change changes over the years, I am also completely well aware of the fact that at any moment people could just be like, what? That's so passe. That doesn't speak to me in any way. And so I am, I never cease to be appreciative of the fact that there are people like you who care, simply care about what I do. So a toast to you. Thank you so much. On my 54th birthday, what I'm thinking most about right now is your support, and I appreciate that. <coughs> That's a lie. I'm thinking about my Yumi, and then I'm thinking about your support. Yeah. She can hear me. <laughs> I'm here. She's right there. <laughs> Thank you so much, my friends. I really appreciate it. To you, a toast. And to art, and to Black Labyrinth. Yay. Oh. There's something in my cup. <laughs> what was it? I don't know. Cheers. 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 Well, there really was something in there. I don't know what it is. It's unidentified. It's an unidentified floating object. What is it? Eliza. Thank you so much, Eliza. I really appreciate that. Okay, now we're going to get to some questions. Ah, ah, click, clink, clink. Okay, here we go. Moist Moose. Hi, I have a question. Do you think you're going to be any more exploring Gothic City episodes once COVID ends? You should do a dark Scranton, Pennsylvania. There's a bunch of Gothic businesses there. Wow, okay, well, first of all, I learned something here today because I did not know there was anything Gothic in Scranton. I thought, I thought Biden was the most Gothic thing to come out of Scranton. Um... So, no, I didn't know that. So that's cool. I definitely want to check that out. Uh, but I, what you may not know is that I, after the Gothic Mexico City episode that was received so very, very well, it got a lot of views, like right away, I started making a New York one 
I made a really, really comprehensive episode on the New York City Guide. I went to like 10 different parties that are weekly, monthly, bi-yearly. I went to events, um, flea markets, uh, stores, clothing, plate, everything you can think of. Cemeteries, literally. Graveyards, well, I guess that's the same thing. Churches, cathedrals, anything of interest for somebody who's spooky, who loves Gothic in every way, in every way. Spooky Gothic stuff, funny Gothic stuff, Gothic architecture, you know, like clinically, academically Gothic stuff, everything, everything. And then the pandemic happened. Thank you, Nakwa. Happy birthday, you and Mayumi deserve all the best. Thank you very much. Um, and then the pandemic happened and um, everything closed. I'm not really sure how many of these things that I covered are even coming back. So I do believe it's still worth doing, you know, finishing, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be a while. It's gonna be, it's gonna take until things return back to some sense of normalcy and, 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 and people can actually go to nightclubs and go dancing. Until then, uh, it's just gonna have to wait. And I'd love to do other cities. I think that's a great idea. So thank you for that suggestion. My Dizzy Melody, buenas noches. Should I sell everything and move to Mexico? Serious question. I want to retire and do my one thing now. If yes, any city or town you recommend? A city, what? Guanajuato. To leave? Yeah, to retire. Um, yeah. Well, I like, I'd rather the beach. You like the beach? Yeah. I mean, Mexico's beautiful, and there are places that can be very dangerous, and uh, you know, but New York City could be very dangerous. So you kind of have to know where you are, what you're doing, and uh, how to keep safe. How to keep safe in Mexico is probably different than how to keep safe in somewhere like New York City. Um, you just need to, uh, it, it, I think it, unfortunately I have to say it would require a lot of research. But I would look into, ¿cómo se dicen uh, las, las pueblos mágicos? Pueblos mágicos. Pueblos mágicos exactly. is a designation that the that the Mexican government has given to certain towns. And it means magical towns. Small and, towns. Yeah, they're small towns, and they're but ma magical, mágico. Yeah. Right? They're magical. And that means that when you go there, you almost feel like you're on like the set of a Disney movie. You know, like everything's very antique, and like there's cobblestone streets and old churches. And, and everything still looks like it did 100 years ago, 200 years ago. And and because of that, it has a magical feeling. Guanajuato is one of those places. And Tepoztlan there's- Tepoztlan also. What? Tepoztlan. Tepoztlan. Beautiful. I, I can barely say that one. Um, so there's a lot of really beautiful, so the first thing I would do is I would research that. Pueblos Magicos, magical towns. And then see which of them you think might be right for you, whether you want to be near the beach or whether you want to be inland or up in the mountains. But that would be a good way to start. But I would highly recommend Mexico. I love it here. Alana Hamilton. Thank you very much, Alana. All right, let me take another question here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Barb says we need mods. Yeah, well, there's, a, you know, unfortunately... You know, when there's like a million questions, you know, and I'm, you know, Barb, of anybody, somebody who's been to Dragon Con three million times and has been at my Q&As, you know that I'm extremely verbose. So when somebody asks me a question, it takes me so long to answer it because I really want to be very thorough, you know. Um, Josh says, I had ex-lovers lover stuck in my head all day at work. I was humming it over and over. Also, I made an animated music video for the night using footage from this Batman video game. Cool. I'd love to see that. And Wolf Girl says, run time and my, ah, run time and my Yumi make you look like a young 54. <laughs> Honestly, you only look 40. Thank you. You're very, very kind. But yeah, she's making a reference to the fact that I say that everything can be healed with rum and time. Like I've had medical conditions and people are like, you should see a doctor. And I'm like, rum and time. If I drink enough rum and wait enough time, it'll go away. I'm entirely certain that this tooth is gonna grow back with enough rum and enough time. Mark my words. Shenanigan says, the album sounds absolutely wicked. I am amazed by all of the talent involved. Do you ever see yourself having a gothic decor clothing line of your own? 
I don't know. I mean, I, you know, it's something that I considered, but I'm not a fashion designer. So if I were going to do it, it'd be more like a licensing deal where somebody's super talented and who's a fashion designer. Do you know anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Mayumi's incredibly talented. She's an unbelievable designer. And I should get back to that in a minute. But it would probably be more like working with a clothing company to come up with a line. But the Lara Voltaire is a line of items that are on their way. The Globlin was the first one. If you haven't seen my Globlin hand sanitizer holder, you should. It's the, the coolest thing I think I personally have ever made. And, um, and then now we're working on scented candles. We just had a really great meeting about that. Started narrowing down what the smells are going to smell like. Oh, there's the, there's the Globlin sanitizer holder. Isn't that wicked? Yeah, well, it's probably got a Bath and Body Works sanitizer in there because mine aren't ready yet. It lights up. It's super bright. So thank you. Thank you, Miami. We've got some scented candles coming on a really beautiful sculpt sculpted base. And I have a, a set of matching gloves and masks, which just are not ready yet. We're talking about doing hairspray. We're talking about doing makeup. We're talking about doing bath bombs, soap. All sorts of just lifestyle items, things that I would want to have around the Lara Voltaire. And if I want to have them around the Lara Voltaire, you might too. So that's just the philosophy behind it. It's items for dark side royalty. And I'm th thinking you're probably dark side royalty if you're watching this. So, Alex says, I've been a fan since I was 12 and I'm turning 24 next month. I just wanted to say thank you for everything and happy birthday. Thank you, Alex. And thank you for sticking around. Um, okay, so Scott says, I have a coffin to build, so I'm going to head off, but I did want to hang out with you a little and wish you the happiest of birthdays and many, many more to come. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for sticking around, and good luck with that coffin. Uh, the Dark Raven says, I got mine. I can't wait for your own hand sanitizer. Oh, my God, so many great ideas. Thank you. Yeah, the hand sanitizer just held up, like a lot of things, unfortunately, but hopefully we'll have it soon. Sturban says, what is your favorite monster? That's easy, King Kong. King Kong was my first love and inspired me to become a stop motion animator. King Kong, and of course, when I say King Kong, I mean like King Kong 1933 King Kong. Um, I, was, I was just telling Mayumi, today we were watching, you know, the trailer for King Kong versus Godzilla. And I was saying, I was telling her about how I was dragged kicking and screaming to see Peter Jackson's King Kong because I thought it was sacrilege. I was one of those people. You know, I was one of those people like, I'm boycotting Rocky Horror Picture Show because it should never be made over again. Like, I was one of those people. I was like, I'm not going to go see King Kong. How dare they do a CGI version of a stop motion classic? And I went to see it and I cried my eyes out. That movie's so beautiful. It's so well done. The storytelling is so lush. The animation is so incredible. It's so emotional. And then I, I learned a lesson and I don't do that anymore. If they make a sequel, if they make a reimagining, I'm like, okay, cool. Let me see it. And then I'll form an opinion. Before I've experienced it. Um, so in any case, King and Toast Beers says, May I ask to work, may I ask to work in an artistic kind of thing to make some videos concerning both innocent and feathery wings in a somewhat live music videos with rather destroying and goth-like buildings in the area? Toast, I welcome pretty much everybody pretty much anything they want with my music all i warn them about is youtube algorithms might spot the music and they might monetize your video i have all of my settings so that you don't get copyright strikes but they may very well play some ads on it and send the money send the you know a penny or two <coughs> my way that is entirely possible um, i have no control over it it is the content id system at youtube but personally i love when people take my work and make stuff with it. So I'm all for it. Uh, Brendan says, serious question from an old friend. As someone looking to get experience in entertainment, writing, voice work, etc., what advice do you have about making connections and finding opportunities? Hmm. I mean, the most obvious thing, which I find a lot of people don't realize is obvious, is getting involved and being part of a community where you are helping others. And 
really, and I'm guilty of this, you know, artists, we're so in our own heads about like, I'm making this thing and this thing is all important. And how do I get other people to see this thing? And how do I get other people to help me promote this thing? And you very rarely stop to think, how can I help others with their project? How can I help to promote other projects? So one of the things that I have found that is a, a very useful way to meet others in the same industry is to attend events, to join clubs, to join groups, and to be proactive in helping other people with their projects. And you have to do it. It has to be from the heart. It can't be, I'm helping this guy because I want X, Y, Z out of it. You really need to be there and you really need to be genuine and you really need to be helping because you want to help. And people will recognize that. If you're genuine and you're helpful, people will recognize that. And when your turn comes around and you have a record you want to promote or you have a project you want to be involved in, People will want to help you. And so I believe that it's important to just, you need to pay it forward, as they say. You know, you need to make the investment in other people's careers. You need to show interest in other people's work. And then they will be interested in yours, hopefully. Hey, Voltaire, do you still keep in touch with the band members from The Odds? Um, I've picked up drumming, and Glenn Serino's work was a big inspiration, but I can't find any of his other work. It says Liam Miller. Liam, Glenn quit drumming. I know this because when I was working on What Are the Odds, I had a couple of new songs, and I was like, well, it should be the same drummer. And I reached out to Glenn, and he, he said, I haven't played drum, drums in years. So he actually gave up drumming. I forget what, I'm not sure what it is that he does, does now. It's probably, it has something to do with animals or conservation, because I know that those were two big interests of his. So, um, and uh, yes, yeah, Zena and Zena and Mark, I, I have spoken to, they came to a show of mine in LA a year or two ago. So I have kept in touch with them, but yeah, uh, I said hi to Glenn recently. Oh, and Tommy Dark, spoke to him as well. Damn, I owe him a check. <gasps> Forgot. <laughs> I told him I'd send him a check for the work that he had done on what is what are the odds I need to get on that thanks for reminding me um, Sabrina says you're oops I lost you Sabrina there you are you're my main influence as a musician you rock thank you thanks for sticking around um, who do you think would win in a fight between King Kong and Godzilla oh who do you think the fight between Kong, King Kong and Godzilla is going to be well, you know, I my, I think a lot of the commentators on the trailer are correct that they're probably going to end up becoming friends and fighting something bigger by the end of the movie. That's what a lot of the commentators said, and I think that's probably right. Um, but they're, they're clearly billing King Kong as the good guy and Godzilla as the bad guy. Um, happy birthday hugs to Madam Mayumi. Love my Globlin so bright. Would you, oh, happy birthday. Okay, now I get it. There's two separate phrases. Happy birthday, hugs to Madam Mayumi. Love my Globlin, so bright. Would you do any sort of beverage for your brand? That's Red Roses Dead asks. Uh, wine, I'd love to do a wine. I'm just, just coming up with the labels alone. You know, if you saw my episode of Pothiscary, Apothecary bottles, and you saw how much fun I had coming up with crazy labels like Plague Be Gone, guaranteed by Dr. Death, will cure you. Well, if it doesn't, what was it? Cures death or your money back. I was just, they were so ridiculous, but they were so much fun to do. Seiyan Achimaru. Ayomaru. I always get this wrong. I'm so sorry. Seiyan Ayomaru. Thank you very much and welcome aboard. Greetings from Russia. Thank you for tuning in. What, no Voltaire brand rum, says Steel Falcon? I know, there should be a Voltaire rum. In fact, I think they should just take the Captain Morgan bottle and just change the red coat to black and just be like, Voltaire rum, have at it. Uh, sometimes they'll play an ad for the night, for my The Night Batman video. I think King Kong and Godzilla will team up and fight Mecha Godzilla. See, that's a, that's another, it's another theory. Um, happy birthday, you beautiful bastard! Please don't die. <laughs> I'll be devastated. Crying Lord, you're very sweet, but I don't know how to tell you this. I am going to die. I accepted that 
decades ago, and that's probably why I'm as well adjusted as I am today. But everybody is going to die, and it's okay. It's okay. But I'm going to try to stick around for as long as I can. ¿Qué tú estás haciendo? ¿Qué tú estás haciendo? What is, what is going on here? Really, seriously, tell me what I'm missing out on. Nothing. So the folks at home, they can't see this, but if you see my art, eyes darting back and forth, because Miami's been like skulking back and forth from the kitchen to outside the house, to the kitchen, to outside the house. To, I don't know what's happening. What, what, are, you, are, you, what are you doing? Are you shuttling drinks to the construction workers upstairs? No. Get to us. Continue. Eh? Continue. Continue. She just, she, something's up. Something's up. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but something's definitely up. Oh my God. It is 9.57. That means we have three minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. I have no idea what's going on. Maybe, maybe there's another birthday surprise. I wouldn't be half, I wouldn't be at all surprised if there was another birthday activity planned. She's like really trying to wear me out. Valeria, you guys are in Mexico. If you want a few days at uh, Quere... I always have trouble pronouncing this. Querétaro, Querétaro. It's Querétaro, right? Querétaro. Querétaro. León, Puebla, etc. I would be more than pleased to gift it to you at the hotels I work for. Oh, that is so very kind. Thank you very much. That is extremely, really kind of you. Valeria works for, I think it's Hilton, if I recall correctly. As she was saying she will give us the hotel rooms if we wanted to do oh, a little travel. nice. That's very sweet. Uh, so now I kind of want to wrap this up at 10, you know, keep it an even one hour. So that gives us exactly two minutes to finish up here. Um, Mr. Voltaire, you don't know how you affect and influence me since I'm in high school. First I heard of you was when you're dead, but my most favorite is Feathery Wings. Gwen, thank you so much, Gwen. Uh, Reaper, Spider Skeleton. Reaper, Spider Skeleton, I read that right. Hi Voltaire, you're amazing, you're my hero and my inspiration. Keep making beautiful songs. Un abrazo de la distancia y feliz cumpleaños. Muchísimas gracias, Reaper Spider Skeleton. Muchas gracias. And thank you for joining us. Oh, and now I think we have one minute left. One minute left. Thank you so much, first of all, for all of the birthday greetings. It is so very, very kind of you and I'm so appreciative. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening to uh, some of the Black Labyrinth. There's so much more coming down the pike. Join me at Patreon if you can. Of course, you don't have to join that $33 level. There's also vastly, vastly cheaper ones. And there's exclusive content all the time. There's a lot of exclusive content. So there is that. And, uh, and if not, just meet me here. Meet me here at YouTube. Thank you for coming on and keeping us informed with everything. Take care. Thank you, Eve. Wait, wait. TV, TV. Okay. I want to say something. Si, quiero decir. Grab the chair, boys. We got another fucking kicker. neighbor went out and got cake. <laughs> Thank you, Miami. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time here on The Lair of Voltaire. More gothic homemaking coming your way in 2021. Tons and tons and tons of Black Labyrinth work happening right now with some of the finest musicians in the world, many, many of them. Bowie, Bowie Band alumni, Bowie alumni, and so many other talented people, Ray Toro and Ann Dorsey and so many others. Thank you for sticking around, and I'll see you soon. Mordida! Uh, Mordida!
No tengo no, con tita, qué. You no tengo like... con qué. Tita. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.